results Cause we want the world to know You're saving grace, amazing love We will go Be the salt and light to the earth In every generation Hi Calvary Youth, was there an awesome time of worship or what? So right here where I am is where the video was shot and I just want to give a huge shout out to God for each and every one of you in CY for being a part of us. Just like we sung, let's be a generation that truly shines for Him. Alright, so this is actually our fifth session of CY Online and we're so glad to have you with us. So do comment an emoji down below to just let us know that you're tuning in. And if this is your first time, do check out our previous videos as well in the link below. So I'm pretty excited. You're probably wondering where I'm going. So I'm about to show you and let's hit right in. All right guys, so here we are at the Calvary Studio. If you're a CY Online regular, then you will be familiar with this place by now. So the difference is that we have a couple of new faces to bring us the new topic of the month. And that's Vic right there, one of our youth leaders who will be hosting the chat for the day. Oh hey Vic, we were just talking about you. What up Charles? Hi guys, how are you guys doing? Well I hope you're excited because I'm excited for today. So come on along as we begin. What's up Calvary Youth? Welcome to our fifth edition of CY Online! Alright, I'm Victoria and today I'm joined with a couple of friends and so I'll just pass the time to let them introduce themselves. Let's start with the boys. Hi, my name is Sam. Hi, my name is Yekong. Hi, I'm Hailey. Hi, I'm Sven. Awesome. 
So um, today we'll be having a bit of chit chat um, and we're gonna start off with a bit of an icebreaker. So um, just so you know guys, the icebreaker might or might not break your friendship or burn down some bridges. So are you ready or not? Yes. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So how this works is I'll be asking um, several questions directed to the boys and the girls and it'll be competitive. Alright, and so if you know your friends better, you'll be and you can answer it correctly, then you'll be scored one point for your group. Okay? And so the group with the most points wins. As simple as that. Alright, so how am I feeling today? I feel like we should start with the boys. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, yes. Sure. Okay. I am gonna direct the first question to Sam. Okay? And basically you're supposed to answer about Yet Kang, right? So it's supposed to test your friendship here. Alright, um Sam, what is Yet Kang's favorite pastime? Slash hobby. Listening to songs? Is that your final answer? Wait. <laughs> 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 um, I'll guess play the drums. Okay, is that your final answer? Yeah. Okay, so I've gotten their um, answers beforehand. So let me review what Yet Kang wrote, okay? Yet Kang wrote that his hobby is mostly practicing drums to be better. So ding ding ding! <laughs> One point for the boys. Good job, good job. Okay, girls, you ready? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna ask Sven, alright? So it's about Hailey. How many siblings does Hailey have, if any? I've got this, I've seen you with them. Two younger brothers. Do you know their names? Yeah, Hadley and Hayden. Hey, yo, ding ding ding! <laughs> That's correct! Hailey has two younger brothers, so one one. Alright. Next. Yeah, come. About Sam, huh? What is Sam's all time favorite beverage? Water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that your final answer? Do I get to change it? Yes, you get one more try. You get to change it if you want to. Mm. You got this, bro. <laughs> favorite it's, beverage. It's, 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 uh, it changes all the time. <laughs> all time favorite. I will say the ice. The ice final answer. Okay. And Sam says that his all-time favorite beverage is hundred plus. <laughs> okay. Okay. So no point, ah. Huh? All right. <laughs> okay. Um. Haley, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Is Sven more of a dog or cat person? Meow or wolf? <laughs> yeah, meow or wolf. Um, why do I not know this? Um, <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with dog. I think is that your final answer? Yeah. Okay. Sven said, "Yeah, I guess a dog. I love all animals, though." <laughs> so okay, yes, she she is a dog person. All right. So ding ding ding. So two points. A. Those leading up, bro. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, alright. I'll let you redeem yourself. Okay. If. Okay. If that's for you, yeah? If Yet Kang could have any profession in the world, what would it be? Profession, uh, Career, career. Okay. A sound engineer. Is that your final answer? Yes. Sound engineer, guys. Hmm. Okay. Yet Kang's dream profession is actually, and this surprised me, Yet Kang, <laughs> <laughs> to be an Olympic swimmer. Guys, would you have guessed it? <laughs> Crazy! Okay, number one, I, I didn't think that you really like swimming, and the next thing, I also didn't think that you want to go for the Olympics. 
So yeah, that's, yeah. You, you learn something new every day, you know? <laughs> so, unfortunately, the winner is the girl! <laughs> Woo! Awesome! I hope you guys are cozied up because we're gonna have a little chit chat with these two pairs of friends, getting to know a bit more about their friendship, how they view biblical friendships, and so yeah, it'll just be a time of interesting discussions. So, um, let's have a little chat, guys. Um, maybe maybe I can start with the girls this time. You know, um, share a memorable moment um, of your friendship like a memory that you treasure, perhaps even start us off with like how have you met, you know, how long have you guys known each other? Okay, um, well we met in Kids Cat. Yeah. And um, how long has it been? About three, three to four years. Three to four years. Wow, okay. Yeah, and um, I don't know if you remember this, but like there would be this time during Kids Cat where we'd have these really long lunch lunch breaks, right? Oh. So we'd go to the back of this corner of the yes. of the room, right? And we'd be playing music Same. and we'd be karaoke to these songs and we'd be singing as loud as possible. <laughs> and like we wouldn't even know the yeah, words yeah. half the time. I remember and like uh, the stage manager would come and Yeah, as well. exactly. <laughs> And like, I mean, to me, it was memorable because like, we just got to enjoy each other's company yeah. and we got closer together as friends, you yes. know, so for me, that was pretty fun, you know? Yeah. Like for me, it's like what Vic said, I think the most memorable moment was when I first met you. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, I already knew God, but like, I didn't really attend CW or anything. So when I first came to Kids Cat, the first person I met was Haley. So what she had this like aura, welcoming aura. So it feels like I want to keep on coming back. Wow, yeah. that's nice. So you guys met in Kids Cat yeah. and the blossoming of a beautiful friendship started yeah. there. Awesome. What about you guys? Mm. So you guys are matching today. I can see um, <laughs> yeah. color coded, you know, yeah. like black and white. Hey, hey, okay. Was that intentional? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what about you guys? Share a memorable moment in your friendship. Uh, I think for me it's how we met. Uh, we met in this thing called interest group. It's like interest where group. we explore our interest in certain stuff. Uh, let's say for us it's drumming. Right. So we are, yeah. So we met there and then uh, we have mutual friends and that's how I met him as well. So the first time I met him is where it's like on Sunday after church. Yeah. And um, yeah. I met him actually through a friend of mine in my secondary school. Oh, so small world. it's weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think it's where interest group um, rated help us. Because yeah. it's a place where we find ourselves wanting to serve uh, our talents for God. And we have that common you yeah. know, thing. And I think that's where it really kicks out our friendship. Yeah, that's through awesome. Through something that we are currently doing. You know, so I think that's a very uh, a beautiful thing that you know that we that we get. Yeah, I agree. So if you guys didn't know, these two are drummers in the church. They're actively serving in our youth, and that's how their friendship bloomed um, through the love for music and drumming. So wow, okay, that's awesome. All right, we're off to a good start. Um, so I'm gonna go like you know dig a bit deeper. Um, you know, just asking some juicy questions. Um, what is one thing that you love about each other, okay? And maybe one thing that that annoys you, a character trait, it could be a habit the person has that annoys you. So, okay, let's start with the girls. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, so what I love about you is that, okay, you know how like doing one voice or kids get you be in charge of like a group of kids, right? Yeah, okay. I love how patient you are with them. Wow. And how much of energy she has, you know, and like honestly, she'd have like ballet class or like so many other classes throughout the day and she'd come for practice so full of energy and patience and yeah, I just love that about you. So yeah. What I love about you is that I don't know how but I just adore you since the first time I met you because like you were always like in the spotlights, right? <laughs> yeah, and like a lot of people look up to you and they come and tell me like, oh, I love Hailey because of this, 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 and yeah. So it's just, I think, just admire her a lot. Oh, okay. Wow, that's so sweet, guys. <laughs> so um, what's one thing that annoys you about one another? I'm curious to know. <laughs> 
Okay, so if you don't know yet, Shen is one year younger than me. Yeah, okay. Okay, but yet she's taller than me. <laughs> so every time I'm with her, she wouldn't hesitate to remind me that she's taller than me. Oh. We'd be walking and she'd be like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So, just, you know, just kind do you of. Do you do the whole like, I'm looking down at you? <laughs> Does she? <laughs> and you, yeah. Sven? Um, for me, like, okay, so after church, we always meet with our circle of friends. And so we always like to take pictures. So this time we came together and like we wanted to take a picture in the garden there. It was really sunny. <laughs> And like the sun was glaring right at us and like we all had to like squint our eyes and then when we took a picture and we saw the picture everyone was like squinting it's like ugly and hers is so photogenic it's like it's the right. sun like it's shining on her how is that possible she looks so good yeah. in photos <laughs> okay wow nice okay what about you guys <laughs> <laughs> mm. one thing you love and one thing that annoys you okay I'll start first. He's like, so, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, what I love about Ye Kang is that um, he's a very supportive friend. So um, he's always there when I'm down and all. And he's, he always give me a listening ear. So I appreciate that a lot. Yeah. But no, <laughs> I think that annoys me a lot. Sometimes I don't understand what he's trying to say. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. about it. You know? <laughs> Um, something about Sam um, that I love about him. He's a, he's a very cool guy, you know. It's very interesting. He's always trying to uh, enlighten, you know, the room. He's trying to be funny around me. And I think it's amazing that, as, a, as, as again I said, like we shared the same interests in music. So, yeah. you know, I, I get to have someone to, you know, have the same interest as me to share the passion you know do something and mm. sometimes you come to my house and you know we'll record some stuff and that's very fun to you know have someone like you to spend time with right. um something that i don't like about him um i guess he's way cooler than i am he's <laughs> <laughs> like too much swag sam you have too much swag tone it down <laughs> no, no, no no i, I think that's that's just a joke I, um there's nothing that's not really like a thing that Sam annoys me actually. So I, I don't know, maybe that's like oh, a face. Sam, do you feel bad <laughs> now? <laughs> I, mean, I think um, our friendship, um, is, no, we're there. There's nothing like bad happened yet. So we'll see. For now, you're safe, man. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh my gosh, I love this. Um, so I guess we are able to see um, them share really real. Uh, and actual funny stuff that they've gone through, um, things that they can remember and give thanks about. Um, but I also want to just pick your brains a little bit on um, things like hurts and disappointments, right? Because we understand that in reality, um, friendships are not always sunshines and rainbows. There are times where people hurt us, people offend us. We get disappointed because expectations are not met. And so, so I just want to hear what you have to say about um, how you think we ought to handle hurts and disappointments in, in friendships, even in the church um, with the family of Christ. Well, for us, I feel that we normally talk about it, you know, we acknowledge each other's feelings and our emotions and we acknowledge the problem, you know, if, the, if we are disappointed or hurt with each other, you know, we talk about it and put it out there, you know. Mm -hmm. And so then together we just get through it, you know? So that's one thing we do, you know, when we are hurt or disappointed. Like, yeah. you know, be honest with, with each other. Because, like what you said, expectations, right? So we have to, like, accept each other for who we are. Because no one's perfect, right? So, yeah, we have to accept that part of each other. All right, all right. That's, that, those are the points. What about you guys? Do you have anything to add on to what the girls have said? I think it's important to um, what they've said because um, as a friendship that we build, not just you know like here, um, it it shows that we care, and that's that's a big move to uh, to have a, a guts to do so mm -hmm. as in a small group. So for this, where we learn to accept who we are in a close friendship, like it it teaches how to be there for 
other people as well, mm-hmm. not just here. And it's a good training point for for what um, Jesus has taught us to do so as well, to the one another and to accept um, who they are as a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think forgiveness is also really important. Um, although it's easier said than done and carried out, sometimes because we, or because we remember what the person has done to us and it hurts. And, um, but I'm glad to hear that you guys believe in talking and resolving disappointments and come to points of acceptance. And that's really important in a friendship. Um, so would you say that the friendship that you guys have with one another builds your faith and builds you up as a person, right? And, and if so, how does your friendship build your faith? Then we can start with the boys' last time. Yeah. I guess it, it is a very important point to have because in the end, we look at each other as brother and sister in Christ, whatever it is. And sometimes it's important to have people like, uh, let's say for example, Sam, right? It's important to that I have someone that I can share my thoughts and yeah. share, you know, uh, spiritual life with. And that's very important because maybe there's some stuff that I don't understand from my point of view of, uh, of my spiritual walk, but sometimes Sam will have a different um, thought of view of how my thoughts uh, comes in and I can get a different point of view from him. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's great to share um, spiritual lives with a close friend. So if I encourage people, if you have um, difficulties in talking uh, deeper stuff with your parents or, you know, it's, it's, it's a good point to have a close friend, a close, um, Christian friends to share your thoughts and to share your life with. Mm-hmm. And from, from there, it, it does build your spiritual walk um, with the Lord because you learn new stuff about um, whatever stuff that you have not realized in the Bible or new testimony or new devotional thoughts that um, your friend will actually bring to the table for you. Yeah, that's a good one. Anything to add, Sam, on your end? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, it's good to have someone to be accountable to. Um, yeah. So Would you like, say that Yet Gang and you are trying to build that in your friendship? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It definitely we build each other not only spiritually but also emotionally. That's great. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I mean you guys are entering adulthood and I think more than ever is the best time to, to build solid friendships up. Yeah. Right? As time gets tougher, as things get more challenging, I think it's important like Yet Gang said. Um, that you have someone that you can journey with spiritually as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Awesome. Um, so what are some of the things that, you know, the challenges that we face in building strong friendships? Like what are some of the things that you feel makes it so difficult in building strong friendships with our brothers and sisters in Christ? Well, like, um, I think that even though we are sisters in Christ, and even though we go to the same church, right, I still believe that we are different people, you know, and because of that, we tend to see the world differently or analyze things differently. And because of that, we might have disagreements, whether it's about faith or our personal life and stuff. So I feel that sometimes it's that struggle to, you know, agree on this on the same things because, you know, we both build each other up, you know, we're there for each other, we advise each other. So I feel that sometimes when we aren't on the same page as something, Right, it kind of just like um, causes us to, you know, have a disagreement, you know, and just not, you know, so yeah. Mm. Yeah. And um, for me, it's even though we go to the same church, like you said, um, we only meet each other every Sunday, right? And like I don't text you every day either. So even though it's like three to four years, it's kind of like probably only every Sunday and like a few intensives. Yeah. So I would say we're not like at the point where we could um, express like a lot of things that we haven't experienced through. So, yeah. 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 I mean, three to four years of yeah. knowing each other, I think you've 
set certain foundations, but you still have a long way to go yes. in terms of growing your friendship. Um, awesome. So I'm going to leave the last question open to all. Um, what are some of the practical things we can do to build healthy, Christ-centered friendships? Any thoughts? Practical things. You know, like we've spoken a lot about our opinions and our convictions and our principles, but what do you think we can do practically and whoever's watching um, can, you know, just what are the practical things that we can do? Um, bring our friends to our tree. <laughs> live groups. Okay, yeah, so Sam said, tag your friends, bring them to live groups, and how does that? How do you think that helps, practically speaking? I mean, because we're in, let's say we're in a same life group, not even in the same life group, we are still growing up together spiritually. Yeah. In a way, but in different journey, I guess. Like, right. Everyone's growing together. Everyone's friends, I guess, brothers and sister, right? So it's good to yeah. do that. I think smaller groups really does help, right? Because we can't be, be close friends and good friends with, with 30 people, right? But in smaller groups, you can pray more personally, hear one another out, and it's a be definitely a better avenue. Okay, cool. So, life groups. Awesome. What else? What, what do you think are some other practical things that we can do? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Like, um... Realizing from what you said, um, I think putting God first in our friendship, right, will help a lot of things. Cause if you put Christ in the middle of your friendship, everything will go well. Cause you will learn to be like Him, right? Yeah. I mean, I was gonna say something like, 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 like friend. You know, I just like kind of if you put God in the center of your friendship, you know, over time you'll just start to, you know, be more. I mean, like you tolerate each other, you know, you'll naturally be, you know, closer in a way, you know, and like you overcome problems better, I guess, so, yeah. Putting Christ in the center. Yes. And how that would look like would probably be praying for one another. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doing Bible study together. Yes. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, Kang, anything else to add? Um, be accountable. To yes, accountability is important. Each one another. Yes. Yeah. It's important to really check out your friends and yep. you know, he or she may be having a tough week and for you to show up, it's it might be it might be something special for the other person. And because you care, yeah, and you know, the other person will start to realize that, you know, or the other person will start to slowly open up to you because you, you, you guys know that or oh, uh, no matter what um, the problem that you guys have, like you guys have each other back. So yeah. from there, it's, it also show that um, this is how um, God has taught us to be, you know, to be, to be there with um, your brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, to check out one another. And from there, you will build a very healthy friendship. And it's just not, um, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to open up, but once you know that, you are doing it with God and you are doing it um, with the friends that you care. It's going to work. Mm. That's so awesome. I'm so glad that we had this chat. I hope you guys have been blessed by everything that we've talked about today. So thank you guys. I really enjoyed the chit chat that I had with the four youths earlier. I'm just going to close up this section with some thoughts. So I suppose we can agree that some of the most beautiful memories in life I often experience with people. For me, um, my family and I have many fond mo memories growing up as a child um, with my younger brother, and we have had many memorable family holidays. Um, but besides that, I personally feel like a large part of growing up um, was really having fun with my friends. But as we grow older, we long for perhaps deeper, more lasting Friendships, like beyond just the fun and the loudness and the partying. We kind of grow out of that eventually. And we end up looking for friends that can support us through the difficult times when times are tough. We all have a deep desire to be loved by others. Honestly, that's how we're created. God created us in that we are loved by Him and we are loved by others. We are made to be connected 
with people. And today we've heard from two pairs of friends share some funny, real and deep aspects of what makes their friendships with the family of Christ different than perhaps some of their friendships outside. And so we're going to look at the Bible today and what it has to say regarding pursuing biblical friendships. So if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Romans 12, verses 3 to 13. So let me give you a little bit of a background, okay? Paul, in his letter to the Roman church, spends the first 11 chapters outlining some of the essential truths of the gospel that we Christians know today. So we see in the first 11 chapters talking about God's righteousness being revealed, our unrighteousness as people, we are sinners, and then the saving power of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, and the new life that we have being set free in Christ Jesus as a result of the work of the cross. So that's the first 11 chapters, okay? After which we move on to chapter 12, the chapter that we're seeing today, which shows the marks of Christian community. So we must first understand that it is the blood of Christ, right? Explained in the first 11 chapter of Romans that bonds us as the family of God. So Christ himself is the reason that we are all tied together as a church family. And hence, guys, the gospel has everything to do with biblical friendships because Paul spent 11 chapters talking about what the gospel is. And then chapter 12 emphasized on friendships and more specifically, friendships within the family of Christ. So we're going to look at Romans 12 verses 3 onwards. For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Now verse 4, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one in Christ and individually members one of another. So the unity in the family of God is illustrated by comparison to our own human bodies, right? So our body has many parts. We have the limbs, we have our eyes, we have our ears. And while they all do not have the same function, we need one another to operate. In the same way, there is diversity in the body of Christ. God has given us different gifts, um, different talents, different personalities, um, and some of us grew up in different cultures and backgrounds as well. And specifically in verse 6, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, Paul says, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, in service, in teaching, that's just the list goes on, right? And so God has given us different gifts within the church, within the body of Christ, and we should give our energies to exercise these gifts that God has given to us. For what? To build the body of Christ. To build each other's faith up. And moving on to verse 9. It says, Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection and outdo one another in showing honour. So in our friendship with one another, and we're talking about biblical friendships here, we are reminded to what? Love genuinely. And that means not with hidden motives or only when you think you can get something in return. Uh, what can this person do for me? What can I gain from this friendship? No, no. It says love genuinely. And love one another with brotherly affection. And that goes to show that we are to show affection to our Christian family the same way we would show to our families, our own families. And lastly, in verse 10, it also says to honour all in the family of God. So we know that in the body, there is the young, right, children, they are the old. Um, even those that might be ethnically or culturally different, 
from us. It says outdo one another. Show honour to all. And then we see in verse 15, I hope you are still with me. And this is important. It says, rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. And so in verse 15 and 16, it clearly shows us that we are to celebrate, rejoice in each other's victories, but also weep, be there for people when they are going through down times, tough seasons. And that depicts what true family is like. They are there for you in the highs, but also in the lows. And it says, live in harmony. Not to be proud or think we are better, but associate with everyone in the body of Christ, including those who you think cannot give you anything in return. And in verse 17 and 18, it says, not to repay evil for evil, and if possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So forgive, forgiveness we talked about earlier um, with the four youths. Um, how can we overcome hurt and disappointments that are truly real and affects us, right? And the Bible says, don't avenge evil with evil. Lift the vengeance to God, the justice to God. And what we can choose to do is to forgive Choose to do what is honourable, not avenging evil for evil. You see, the world paints a certain picture of what friendships look like. We see it especially on television um, and movies that we watch, right? Well, if you're old, as old as me, you probably heard of the drama Friends, right? There's Monica, Chandler, Ross, Rachel, or, or Gossip Girl, right? But there are also current series on Netflix, things like Riverdale, right? You see um, super tight-knit friendships between um, Archie, Veronica, Betty, Jughead. And, and, and somehow Hollywood and movies and TV series do emphasize a lot on friendships, on people coming together. But what different, like what differs us, right? The worldview of friendship and the biblical view of friendship. Have you ever thought about that? I'm just going to throw in a couple of examples of worldview versus biblical view. Oftentimes, the worldview depicts this. My friends should fulfill my ultimate need for happiness and companionship, which means my friends always have to be there and it should be enjoyable. We should always be happy and it should always be there when I jeer them and when I ask them to go out. If not, I get super upset. But the biblical view, we recognize that while companionship with one another is important, there are a lot of things that we know we as humans cannot meet each other's deepest needs. So the biblical view of friendship points one another to the ultimate source of satisfaction, happiness and fulfillment and that is found in Christ Jesus. Only Christ can fulfill our deepest needs. Even our best friends can't do that. And perhaps the second worldview that, um, that we have of friendships is that if my friends don't give or invest as much in a friendship, why should I? I'm just wasting my time. You're cancelled. You know, if you're not going to invest just as much, I'm not either. But what does the Bible say about friendship? We serve one another, not because how much the person can give in return. We do not serve out of selfish ambition. And let's, let's read that in Philippians. Philippians 2, 3 to 5. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility, valuing others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, 
but each of you to the interests of others. So brotherly and sisterly love in the Bible really shows us that it's deeper than just fun and good weather friends. We are bond together because of Christ. We have an eternal bond in Jesus Christ. And that makes our friendship so much more meaningful, so much more unique. And so here, I'm just going to leave three points. Our relationship in the family of Christ ought to, number one, help each other grow in Christ-likeness and holiness. And we see that in Ephesians 4, 15 to 16. Building one another up in Christ, right? Which, which the verse says, is not about blind affirmation. We're not saying like, you go girl, I'm gonna cheer you on, whatever it is, you do wrong thing or so, I cheer you on. It's, it's not that kind of building one another up, you know? But rather, what we're trying to do is rallying each other to live a life worthy of the calling we received in Christ. When, when someone drifts away, when my good friend drifts away, we help each other to stay the path. And that's what iron sharpening iron is, isn't it? There might be times where you have to have difficult conversations. There might be times where you have to maybe correct a friend. Um, you know, talk about what shouldn't, been, what shouldn't have been done. And all these things is so that we would not live a life of sin, but a life of holiness. But remember this, all of this should be done out of love and not condemnation. It is done to help each other grow in holiness. And so what this means, the first point, right? Help each other grow in Christ-likeness. It means our conversations are marked by gospel hope. We prioritize each other's spiritual well-beings, emotional well-beings. Um, we prioritize the study of God's word together, like, like some of them shared earlier on. And number two, our relationship with the family of Christ ought to mean that we rejoice and lift each other up. And we see that in Romans 12, 15. We read that earlier. We ought to rejoice in one another's growth and success. So biblical friendships wishes growth and blessings on your friend, right? You're not threatened when your friend is doing better than you. You're not threatened when your friend is growing in character. No, we rejoice when this happens. We are not threatened by the success of others. And we lift one another up. We have compassion. We weep with those who mourn. And that means we go the extra mile to help. We go the extra mile to lift up a brother who is in need. Just like the Good Samaritan, right? And what happens is when we do all these things, instead of feeling like, oh, I have to give up so much. No. The reward and, and what happens after that is just great joy. Can you imagine if, if your close friend, your good friend, um, a brother or sister in Christ has, has grown has, has, you know, been lifted up from a, a dark season because you've constantly encouraged them. Man, I would feel such great joy if I see my sister in Christ just happy and in a better state of mind and spiritual being. So two points already, right? Help each other grow in Christ-likeness. Number two, rejoice and lift each other up. Last one our relationship with one another ought to give the world a fuller picture of who God is. Biblical friendships can put the gospel on display, right? Our testimony, our way of living, the way we treat one another is a witness of the love God has for us. And it's clear in John 13, 34 to 35. Jesus says, A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples 
if you love one another. And it's reiterated again in John 17, in Jesus' priestly prayer. Jesus prays to the Father and he says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, they are being the disciples, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And so healthy Christ-centered friendships gives the world a fuller picture of who God is. So some of you might ask, practically speaking, Vic, how do I seek out such Christ-centered friendships? How do I do it? While there is no exact formula how we can build healthy communities and friendships, I hope I can just leave with you a couple of pointers, tips maybe, that you can put to practice in hopes to build Christ-centered friendships. Number one, we got to start somewhere. So start in the local church, start in the youth group. If you've not already belonged to our youth group, our live groups, plug in. Go beyond the two hours in a Sunday. It's very hard to make friends just sitting in a sanctuary and going home. We don't get to fellowship and meet people that way. Live groups are the great platforms. Why? Because like what Sam said, it's so hard to connect with, with 50 people at a time. But by starting with 8 to 10, it helps us to fellowship better. And secondly, you got to be open. We all have to be open. And, that, and that's tough. Being vulnerable can be difficult. But I guess, as with anything, if we are sincerely desiring um, to build healthy friendships, we can't wait to be invited, right? We have to be open, we have to be forward. And more importantly, we have to make time for it. Because friendships take time to grow. Friendships don't just bloom overnight. And so as we invest in each other's lives, as we invest um, fellowshipping, going out for a meal, getting to know one another, um, our friendships can potentially grow into something beautiful and meaningful. But I think more importantly, if anything, is for us to check ourselves first. The health of our relationships, right, honestly speaking, with other people largely depend on the health of our relationship with God. True intimacy flows out of a healthy relationship with God. We can't, we can't encourage a brother in Christ. We can't even have a desire to pray for, for my good friend if, if my relationship with God is not right to begin with. And hence, if anything, we got to check ourselves first before we seek out Christ-centered friendships. Well, as a closing, um, I just want to leave you with this. While we may not be able to choose what we go through in life, we do get to choose who we go through it with. That's the power of biblical friendships. That even if our friends have different personalities. I'm an introvert, you're an extrovert. We have different hobbies. We like different food. We support different football teams. All those things don't stand in a way of Christ-centered friendships. Why? Because we understand that what unites us is Christ. We have an eternal bond, guys. Not just temporal, but an eternal bond held together in Christ. And that kind of bond goes beyond and deeper than any bond we could ever have with anyone. And that bond we share with our brothers and sisters in Christ hopefully will spur us on, encourage us to love, to pray for one another, to build one another up. And that we are not threatened by each other's successes, nor are we jealous by each other's victories. So my hope and prayer is that you, who are watching, will find a Christ-centered community, a place where you can belong. Um, and for you, Calvary youth, teens who are watching, let us be that community. 
Let us build that community with Christ in the centre of what we do, how we speak, how we live. That we as Calvary youth may continue to spur one another on in holiness, to rejoice and lift each other up, and to give the world a fuller picture of who God is. Thank you, and God bless. Thanks, Vic, for such a relatable message. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that you have allowed us to hear today. We know that it is not by coincidence, but it is your divine plan for us to receive this message. Lord, we just want to thank you for this Christian community that we have in Calvary Youth. And after hearing the message that Vic has shared, we pray, Lord, that we will not be satisfied with surface-level friendships, but that we will seek out Christ-centered ones. Help us, Lord, to support one another towards living a holy life the way that you have called us to. And I pray that we will support one another and rejoice with one another in our successes, as well as be there for one another in the times of sorrow. Help us, Lord, to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Most importantly, we pray in all of our Christian friendships that God, you will be glorified and that the world will be able to see a fuller picture of you. So we just thank you, O Lord, for what you are going to do in our friendships. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If today was your first time hearing about Jesus and you would like to accept him to be your Lord and Savior, we welcome you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, thank you for allowing me to hear your word today. Forgive me for I am a sinner and have lived life my own way. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sins so that I can live a life of abundance in your love. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I place my faith in you today. Help me to live a new life as a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. If that was your first time praying that prayer and accepting Jesus into your heart, or if you would like to know more about Him, do drop us a DM on our Instagram or Facebook so that we can reach out to you. It's announcement time! Okay, so firstly, our next CY Online will have a slight change of time. So instead of being at 1, it will now be at 11.30 and it will be on the 10th of October, still on all of our social media pages. So do check it out. And secondly, we still have our CYYA virtual prayer meetings every fortnightly on Tuesdays. So do check our Instagram bio for the link. And thirdly, we still have our teens group online as well as our live groups. So DM us if you would like to find out more. Lastly, but not least, our church physical services are back on. So on Saturdays, we meet at DH at 5pm. And on Sundays, we meet at CCC at 8am as well as 11 So be sure to be there. See ya!